my seven-year-old asked me the night before we left and she goes mom why are you counting birds why aren't you counting grizzly bears or moose or caribou or wolves and I said to her honey when you go into the forest what's the first thing you hear and she said birds birds tend to tell us a story and if something's wrong in the forest the birds go quiet so the birds almost give us a signal or a warning when something's wrong I'm here to do a cumulative effect study on human disturbance and climate change on bird populations and other wildlife populations uh, in the central Yukon. We've been visiting a variety of sites that are kind of aimed to look at the effect of human disturbance uh, and mining and roads on the landscape. So we've been visiting sites that are in intact forests, so they're quite far away from any human activity or disturbance. and then all the way up along the gradient to heavily impacted sites where there's active mining and traffic and highways going through an environment. We do this through the use of point count surveys, so that involves early mornings to get up and kind of count the birds at different areas um, when they're most active, so that's early in the morning, usually between 5 and 9 a.m. Bird song is really like a hard field work for example, the plants, if you want to know what a plant is, is really easy because it stays there, so you have plenty of time to look at your book, but bird songs are really dynamics. Uh, you don't always see the bird, you don't always hear the, like the complete song of a bird, so it's really kind of, of a cool game to try to identify the bird without like all the clues that you can have. I definitely like the black pole warbler a little bit. It kind of has this insane migration where it's flying like some ridiculous amount of kilometers and in a single trip. It's not stopping over anywhere to refuel. It just takes off from um, the east coast of, of America and it just flies nonstop until it gets to South America. It's just an amazing little expression of endurance. This morning when we were at a site we sat down, we had something to eat, and to the east of us, we could hear the act of dredging in the mines. And you could hear the hum of the motors and the engines. Placer mining is, is gold mining. So gold is deposited basically in low-lying areas, usually in watercourses. You're kind of scooping up um, the bed of rivers, and you're running it through a large machine that's kind of vibrates the rocks and rushes water over them and that's meant to knock the gold loose um, into a pan where you receive it and then you return that waste rock back to um, the area that you got it at and you kind of like just shift the stream over it's not it's not like a desolate wasteland so much as it's it's deteriorated habitat there's there's still vital areas there and it's still usable so of course you're still going to have birds using areas that are heavy in water because everything needs everything needs water placer mines need water and birds need water if you look at a single mine you're not really going to get an idea of the big picture because there's so many of these little placer mines dotted all across the landscape and they're all in very critically sensitive ecosystems environments that you really have to look at all of these mines as a whole instead of just each mine separately. I think that birds kind of give us uh, a unique vantage point that you don't get with other larger, maybe like bears or moose, uh, in the respect that they're traveling great distances to come up this way. If they're coming all this way to utilize habitat that's up here um, and it's not there for them, they don't really have a lot of their options. They've flown thousands of kilometers to get here and they can't exactly just turn around and go back. So the science question really is how many effects can an ecosystem sustain and remain healthy? Ultimately we are out here learning how we can reduce our impacts on the natural world so that we can continue to hear the birds sing.